for now, we're going to move on to news. Actually, just before we touch on Antonio Inoki, I wanted to bring up uh, best wishes to Teddy Long. He recently announced that his wife had died, but we don't know how. He didn't say how. Yeah. Teddy's a good guy. I never met his wife. And he never spoke about his personal life. But he always seemed to be happy. So, and Teddy was a good guy. And I'm, my condolences to him and the family about the passing of his wife. Mm. Uh, did you call him Peanut Head like everybody else did in WCW? I never called him that. <laughs> but I always called him Teddy. Mm. And he was a referee first. And then he went to WWE and they made him a manager. And he was over. Teddy Long was entertaining. He was entertaining as hell, and, I, and I'm glad for him because he worked a lot of years not really making much money, and when he got there, I guess it kind of paid him back for his years of service. But he was a good manager, very good. Did, um, I, I can't remember when he left as uh, the GM for SmackDown, but did he ever try and put you in a tag team match player? No, I never had any. I think t- the time I got there, Teddy was, he was out of service, and I think he was still around, still there, but they weren't using him for anything. Because, but that's that's normal for WWE. You'll see guys at TV that you, and if you went on the road, you wouldn't see them. They would just come to TV and do absolutely nothing except maybe eat and catering. And they would pay them. And then they go home and then, Two weeks later or a week later, you're you're they're back again. And I'm thinking, they lose a lot of money when they just fly these people in and they don't do anything. <laughs> but that wasn't my money, so it, it was it was their business decision. So but he was how long was he there? He was there about ten years, wasn't he? I'd say even more. He's he was uh in WCW for many years, and then he was a manager in WCW, then he went to the WWF as a referee. And then he became mm-hmm. a manager again in 2003 or something. And then he became the GM for years of SmackDown. And you see, I don't even know how he started. You know, he didn't start at WCW. He started maybe some independents or somewhere. And I don't even know. I've never heard the story of how he got in, who hired him first. or But he was in WCW, so it had to be somewhere. He's from Atlanta. So it had to be somewhere around there. But anyway, stories like that, they – they actually uh, motivate me a little bit because, you know, a guy that's, he, he weighed 150 pounds, maybe. So he couldn't be a wrestler, but he loved wrestling so much and wanted to get it. He just kept trying and trying and trying. And it's like a guy that asks me, he wants to be a wrestler. How do I get in? How do I get in? Well, there's no formula to get in, but it's just, all I can say is just be persistent. Keep asking and asking and asking. Because what's the worst thing anybody can say to you is no. And then, so wait a week, two weeks, ask them again. And make them say no every time you see them to finally, they might get tired of saying no and say, okay, come on and join us. I believe in Teddy Long's case, I think he was the jacket carrier first maybe for maybe. georgia championship wrestling and then i know he was like a dj in like the 70s or something well, and, maybe uh, yeah. but he, i don't but still i don't know how he got in who he he had to ask somebody so next time i see him i'm going to ask him that hmm. and how did you do it a good idea as well we should do uh next yeah, and then then i'll tell you then you'll know see hmm. as the authority be authoritative and right. then you know the story absolutely 